Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying healing and our current segment on this study is studying the case for healing and the evidences and proofs that it is absolutely, positively, unquestionably, undeniably God's will for you to be healed. And now we are just finishing up this one proof and evidence that we talked about all last week, and then I continued it yesterday. And that is the proof God wants you to be healed because of his commission to believers, because of his commission, Jesus' commission to believers. And we already looked at Jesus' commission to the 12 disciples in Matthew 10, 1, he gave them authority to heal every disease and sickness. And in verse eight, he told them to heal the sick freely. They received freely give. And then we saw the commission to the 72 disciples in Luke 10, verse nine, Luke 10, one, he sent out 72 And in verse nine, he said, heal the sick who are there. That is in every town. And so he gave the same commission to the 72 disciples that he gave to the 12. And that was to heal the sick. And then finally, we are looking at what is known as and called the great commission. The Great Commission is found in Mark chapter 16. And I know that if you've been a Christian very long, you're familiar with the Great Commission. In Mark 16, this commission is then to all believers. As we see in this verse, Mark 16, verses 15 through 18, he said to them, And then this is, you know, the whole crowd of believers that were there at the time um, that he ascended. This is actually just before he ascended into heaven. His last words in his last words in the last sermon, let me say it like that. In the last sermon, he spoke on the Mount of Ascension before he ascended into heaven Verse 15, Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Now we know from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel throughout those four books has always been the gospel of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is near. Mar- uh, Matthew six thirty three. seek first his kingdom and all these things will be given to you as well. So everything you need, all of your needs are supplied. Everything you need is available in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is here. And as we looked at again and again and again, you look at, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but even when we just look at Ma- Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, 35 and 36, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. No, Matthew 4, excuse me, verses 23 and 24. 23 and 24, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God and healed every disease and every sickness. Then in Matthew 9, 35, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God and healed every disease and every sickness. And again and again, it says he healed, he preached the gospel of the kingdom and he healed the sick. The commission in, uh, to the 12, the commission to the 12 in Matthew 10, he told them to preach the gospel of the kingdom in Luke. Uh, actually, the comparable passage of Matthew 10 is Luke 9. He sent out the 12 in Luke 9 and told them to preach the gospel of the kingdom and heal the sick. And then he sent out the 72 
disciples in Luke 10 and told them to preach the gospel of the kingdom and heal the sick. So again and again and again, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God is here. Everything you need is in the kingdom. The kingdom is a kingdom of deliverance. It's a kingdom of freedom from bondage. It is a kingdom of freedom from the curse, freedom from the curse of sin and death so that when you come into the kingdom of God, you can be healed in your body, healed in your mind, healed in your finances, healed in your family, healed in your marriage, in your relationships. And then all that you touch prospers. That is the blessing of the kingdom of God. And so we see again and again that the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is to be with healing the sick, healing the sick goes with preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So now let's go back to the great commission. Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, we know that is the gospel of the kingdom of God. It is here for you to all creation. Verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. And I told you yesterday in the Hebrew language of the Old Testament and in the Greek language of the New Testament, in the original languages, Hebrew and Greek, of the Bible, there is no punctuation. There are no periods, commas, semicolons, or colons of any kind. No punctuation in those languages. So that means all punctuation, every period, every comma, every colon or semicolon is added into the text by the translators. That's one reason why different translations have the comma in a different location. Well, that is significant in this verse because after the word believe, these signs shall follow those who believe. There is a colon. A colon is the dot, dot, the two dots. And then it says those who believe dot dot in my name, they will drive out demons. I pointed out to you yesterday that I am convinced that that colon is in the wrong place. It should be three words to the right after the word name in the words in my name, because it should read This is the way I believe it should read based on the understanding of the Bible and other scriptures. Not only these signs will accompany those who believe because believe what? It doesn't tell you what to believe. These signs will follow those who believe. Uh, Believe what? Believe the sky is blue and grass is green. Well, Just because you believe grass is green doesn't mean that you're going to heal the sick. Just because you believe the sky is blue doesn't mean that you're going to heal the sick and raise the dead. No, there is something very specific what you are supposed to believe or believe in. And it's the next three words. Believe in my name, in my name in my name and so that believing in his name is actually what you are supposed to believe to do all the signs not just the first one because the way it's written it looks like the only thing you do in his name is drive out demons but then the rest of the things in the list you don't need the name well Obviously, you do need his name and you need to believe in his name. So it's not just the first thing in the list that needs to be done in the name of Jesus, but it's everything 
in this list of signs. Everything in this list of signs, you must do it. How? By believing in his name. So that's why I, I say it like that. And also, you see that confirmed in Acts chapter 3 at the beautiful gate. In verse 6, Peter said to the lame man at the beautiful gate, silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And then he said later when he was preaching to the crowd, it is faith in the name of Jesus that made this man walk. And so faith and authority going together, faith in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what you are to believe in Mark 16 17, these signs shall follow those who what? Who believe in my name. Those who believe in my name and then put the colon. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. Now that's not to test the Lord and just do it to try to prove something. No, that's if you are in a place where it needs to be done. Where it has to be done. Not that you're testing God. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus, taking him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said, throw yourself down because God will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And Jesus answered, do not tempt the Lord, your God. So no, you're not going to pick up snakes just to try to prove something. No, but it's if there should, for some reason, be in need. Maybe you've got a snake right in front of you and it's threatening you. Maybe you'll have to pick it up and throw it somewhere. Who knows? But you can always have faith in the name of Jesus and the authority of his name that even the animals are subject. Even the animals are subject to the authority that you have invested in you, delegated to you, In the name of Jesus. Okay. So that's enough of that. And then when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. So you're again, you're not going to test the Lord and purposely drink poison and say, I believe in the name of Jesus. This won't hurt me. No, that's foolish. And you don't have authority to do that. It's only if it is needed. For example, I know personally a friend, missionary friend, who uh, preaches in Muslim countries. He preaches in Muslim countries. And he preaches salvation. He preaches the gospel. And one time he was in a group in a place where some Muslims poisoned his drink. They poisoned his drink. He did not know it. He drank it without knowledge that it was poisoned. And he went on totally unharmed, totally unharmed, not a symptom hit him. And he lives by faith. He preaches the gospel. He does the work of the ministry and he's bold. That's why he's in the Muslim countries. And afterward, these Muslims came to him and said, we poisoned your drink and we watched you and nothing happened to you. What? Why? Why? And then he was able to witness to them. So that's the kind of situation where it's not you purposely drinking poison, but if somebody else is going to poison you, it won't hurt you when you have faith in the name of Jesus. And then the last sign in this list in verse 18, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Another translation says they will get well. They will lay their hands on sick people and they will get well. Another translation says the God's word translation says they will place their hands on the sick and cure them and cure them. The Murdoch translation says they will lay their hands on the sick and they will be healed. They will be healed. I like God's word. 
they will lay their hands on the sick and cure them. And then the complete Jewish Bible says, and heal the sick by laying hands on them. They will heal the sick by laying hands on them. So you see here, this commission is not to just 12 people. It is not just to 72 people. This is the great commission that we recognize is for all time through the church age, at least the entire church age for all time, for all people. The great commission is to every believer. And that's why it says these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall heal the sick by laying hands on them or they will lay hands on the sick and cure them. Now, notice this commission is not even only to those that are in full time ministry to the fivefold ministry offices. It does not say these signs will follow apostles or these signs will follow prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers. What we consider fivefold ministry offices. It says these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. Do you, first of all, are you born again? Are you born again? Have you received Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? And you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you believe God raised him from the dead. Do you believe, Philippians 2, that God has given him the name that is above every name? That at that name, every knee shall bow in heaven, on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you believe that Jesus has been given that name that is above every name? If you believe that, if you believe in his name, then these signs are also supposed to follow you. And it is heal the sick. The sick is an all inclusive Phrase meaning all the sick, all the sick, just as Jesus healed every disease and sickness among the people. And he then gave the 12 uh, disciples authority in Matthew 10, 1 to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness that commission is carried on and given to the entire church, the entire church that includes you, if you believe in his name. So that means you are also commissioned to heal all the sick, every disease and sickness. Now, again, we clarify that, or and qualify it was those who came to Jesus those who came those who asked not just anybody you know without the direction of the lord so you have to be led by the spirit to know whom to go to and then you can also believe that everybody who asks can receive, as it says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be open to you. Verse 8, because everyone who asks receives. Now, later in this series, and I'm getting close to it, We will look at reasons why people don't get healed as we've already talked about some reasons. We've talked about it already. There are blessing blockers in people's lives. There are healing blockers in people's lives. We'll talk about that later, but I want you to see that one of the evidences that God wants you to be healed is the great commission to heal all the sick. And one more verse to go with that commission. 
Let me show you John fourteen twelve. John fourteen twelve says, I tell you the truth. Anyone, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the father. So he has anyone. He says anyone who has faith in me, the word faith in simplicity means believe anyone who believes in me. Are you in anyone? Does anyone include you? Yes. Now, do you believe in him? Do you have faith in him? Yes, I hope so. Then that means if you and you are and anyone you are included in anyone and you have faith in him, then that means you too can do what Jesus has been doing. Now, I want to go back to that word anyone. I want to go back to Mark 16. And the commission, they shall lay hands on the sick. What qualifies you to do this? You believe on the name of the Lord Jesus. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So if you, if you're saved, then that's the first qualification. Then number two, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. So believing in his name is the second qualification or requirement for healing the sick. Number one, be saved. That's verse 16. Believe and be uh, baptized and you'll be saved. So number one, be saved. Number two, believe in his name. That's verse 17. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. Verse 17. And then verse 18, they shall lay hands on the sick. So the only third qualification is you have to have hands. Do you have hands? Lift up your hands, shake your hands, wiggle your hands. If you have hands, then that is the next qualification. Your hands. Now take your hands and when God leads you, put them on the sick. Put your hands on the sick and believe in his name and in the name of Jesus Command sickness to go, command the person to be healed and be made well. And the Bible says they will be healed. And then back to John 14, 12, I wanted, so I went back to Mark 16. Now I'm back in John 14, 12. Anyone, are you in anyone? I want you to see you are included. You, yes, you, you are included. Anyone who has faith in me. Are you in anyone? Yes. Do you have faith in him? I hope so. If you have faith in him, then the next thing you will do what Jesus did. You will do what Jesus did. And even greater things than these, he will do even greater things than these because I am going to the father. Now here, I want you to see that another reason Christians don't get healed is there are a lot of Christians, well, it goes back to they're not convinced it's God's will. And I told you this example already, and I'm going to repeat it again because you need it. You need to hear it. Jesus commissioned the disciples to heal every disease and every sickness. Now, to take that example again, that if I give you a basket of apples and there are 40 apples in the basket, and then we are in a room with a group of people and there are 30 people, 30 people, 40 apples. You got it? 30 people, 40 apples. So there's more than enough apples for everybody. And then I give you this commission. Give an apple to everyone. Give an apple to everyone. Now, then, would it be right for you to go to the first person 
stand in front of them with a basket of apples and then turn around and look at me and say, Cherry, do you want me to give him one? And then go to the next person, turn and look at me, Cherry, do you want me to give him one? And then go to the next one, Cherry, do you want me to give him one? No, you don't ask because I said give one to everybody. So it is wrong when so many, many Christians start to pray for the sick and they start their prayer with this, these words, Father, if it be your will, please heal so-and-so. Please heal my brother, heal my sister, heal my wife. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. Don't do it again because you are violating God's command. He said, heal every sickness and every disease. Well, then that goes with John fourteen twelve. The commission is do what I have been doing. A lot of healing and the working of healing goes with exercising your spiritual authority. You heal the sick by commanding them in the name of Jesus, be healed, be well in Jesus name. You lay your hands and don't ask everybody else to do it for you. You do it yourself. Well, I'm out of time, so join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.